Welcome to this Dyson Sphere program tutorial where I will explain the logistics systems, hopefully enabling you to better understand how to configure and set up a functional logistics system for your games. In the game I'm using as a demonstration for this tutorial video, I am in the mid to early late stage of the game and I have set up a logistics system that I am fairly happy with. Let's start with the uh, planetary logistics station. These stations have uh, three item slots, each slot holding a maximum of 5,000 items per slot. To select an item to populate a slot, just click the uh, round grey icon on the line where it says empty slot, and then pick the item you want in that slot. As you can see, the icon of that resource appears and you get some information available to you. Storage tells you how many items are currently in the station. In transit tells you how many of the item are in transit to the station via either logistics drones or logistics vessels in uh, the regard of the larger logistics stations. And finally, Max tells you what you've set the maximum storage of the item for this particular station at. To change the maximum, you can drag this slider and as you can see, uh, you also have colors that gives you a visual indicator. Light gray indicates items in storage. Dark gray, which this is light gray. Dark gray indicates allocated storage that is not yet filled. Blue indicates items that are in transit. And black indicates unfilled storage. Finally, there are the buttons on the right of these sliders, which you can click to modify the setting. You can choose between uh, Supply, Demand and Storage. Supply means that the station is supplying other stations. Demand means that the station is requesting this item from other stations that are set to supply. And Storage means that you are just storing the item in the station. If you want to take items from a station, you can right click on an icon to bring up a slider. Now oh, I have none of those in here, so here. And then you can uh, do the, use this to transfer these items into your inventory, like that. Likewise, you can also move items from your inventory into the station, like that. But that uh, provides that there is space available. Note that that right click slider actually applies to anything you click in the game that is stacked. Uh, so you can also do this in containers, uh, your inventory, uh, assemblers and so forth. Remember to put logistics drones into your stations. Not all of them need them, but I personally prefer to just fill every station up with a max of 50 drones. And you can also choose to use less than 50 if you prefer. 50 being the max, depending on the expected load of the station. This uh, indicator here shows the current power charge of the built-in accumulator that is inside the station. For a planetary logistics station, the maximum power held in this accumulator is 180 megajoules. And finally, there are also three sliders at the bottom here under configurations, and we'll cover those in the larger interplanetary logistics station, which we will move on to now. So let's find one of those. These larger stations function much the same way as the smaller station, but with some key differences. First of all, these stations can hold up to five items, uh, with a maximum limit of 10,000 instead of 5,000. They also have sockets uh, down here for planetary vessels and for warpers. You can of course use these stations for planetary logistics only if you just need the additional item slots. But one thing I haven't mentioned so far is that there is a minimum distance between the stations where the minimum distance between an interstellar logistics, logistics station is significantly longer than the smaller planetary logistics station as I will demonstrate to you quickly here. If we go there and I put one there, that is the smaller one. You can see that I can place one rather close by, but the larger one is much farther away. Let's uh, remove those again. 
back to the station. There is also two buttons over here instead of just one. And as you can see, there's local and remote buttons. The local button works exactly as the planetary logistics station button. Uh, but the remote button, on the other hand, affects whether the station will supply or demand things from other planets, whether those are within the same solar system or even in different solar systems. Remember that, as with the planetary logistics station, you need to put logistic drones and logistics vessels into the station, depending on whether the station is operating only on the local planet, where you would not need the vessels, or with actual interstellar logistics, where you would need the interstellar logistics vessels. So if the station is operating as an interstellar logistics station, you must have logistics vessels in at least one of the stations that either supply or demand the item you're working with. You also have a slot here for the warpers, and I prefer to demand the warpers directed to the stations that need them, but you can also feed them into the station using belts. That slot is only relevant, however, for the stations that you desire to use for vessels that are going to undertake longer journeys between different star systems. A quick note here. The maximum power held in the accumulator of this station is 12 gigajoules, a much larger amount of power than the smaller station and thus also a significantly higher drain on your power grid if the station is charging its accumulator. And that brings us to the configuration section. There are six sliders here, where three of them are also present on the planetary logistics station, which is why I am covering them all here in this section. There is also two checkboxes in the lower right that only appears in the interstellar logistics station, which we will also cover. First, the max charging power slider here decides how much the station is allowed to drain from your power grid. The number shown, 60 megawatts being the default of the interplanetary logistics station, is what the station will draw from your power grid if it is at 0% charge. While charging, the drain on your power grid is reduced slowly so if this station's built-in accumulator has 10% charge, it will have reduced the power drain to 54 megawatts. At 50% charge, it will be draining 30 megawatts, and so forth, until fully charged. Every time a drone or vessel enters the station, that uh, drone or vessel recharges itself from the built-in accumulator, which then makes the station recharge itself back to 100%. Second, we have the transport range of drones, where the default value is 180 degrees. This slider can be used to uh, make sure that your drones do not travel across the entire planet. The more you reduce it, the smaller action radius of your drones in this station. Third, the transport range of vessels with a default value of unlimited can be used to make your logistics network more efficient. My plan is to use this slider to my advantage and having a chain of logistics station branching out throughout my cluster of stars so that the farthermost systems send their products via several other stars before arriving in the home system. This does require a constant and reliable source of warpers though, so you need to make sure that you have a stable production line of those that you keep fed with the raw materials needed to make the warpers so that they can be distributed throughout the chain. Fourth. The distance to enable warp, with a default value of 12 astronomical units, is used to control when the logistics vessels will enable warp. If the distance the vessel is going is going to be longer than what this number is set to, it will use a warper to warp to that destination. Fifth, the minimum load of drones, with a default value of 10%, is used to control when the station will send out drones. Note that research affects the amount a drone can carry and that the percentage you are adjusting here is the percentage of your current drone cargo capacity, factoring in the researched text that you have in the technology tree under upgrades. This slider can be increased to ensure that drones do not waste energy to fly off picking up just a few items, where an example of such a situation would be that you need to conserve energy. Sixth. The minimum load of vessels with a default value of 100% is used to control when the station will send out vessels. Again, research modifies the cargo capacity of vessels, so keep the same things that I mentioned about the drones in mind for this slider. 
Otherwise, this slider has the same applications as the, as the drone load slider, but this might for instance be adjusted if you want to ensure that you're not sending a full load to a station. Say you're dealing with an item that you're short on currently, like for instance warpers, or an item that is in high demand that you want spread out to several stations. Now, the checkboxes, both of which are checked by default. The orbital collector checkbox is used to control whether the station will send its logistics vessels to pick up goods from any orbital collectors that you may have placed on gas giants. Keep in mind that this factors in the other settings you've set, like the transport range of vessels. So be careful with this one, so that your vessels do not embark on a 30 light year journey to pick up hydrogen, unless that is what you want them to do of course. And then the Must Equip Warpers checkbox. This checkbox ensures that your logistics vessels will not embark on that 30 light year journey without, without having warpers available. It would be a very boring and long wait for the vessels to undertake a journey of a total of 60 light years, so I strongly recommend that, unless you have some very specific reason for not being worried about such a situation, to keep this box checked at all times. And that, I believe, should cover the basics, and some advanced stuff of how to set up a logistics network. Logistics networks are a key feature of Dyson Sphere program, and a great way to make sure that your factories are being provided with the materials needed for the various production chains. One example that I am using the logistics system for myself is that I have set smelting line and refinery line hub planets. And then I set up logistic stations that supply the raw materials from around the star cluster to these hub planets. Thus, ensuring that I do not have to set up smelting lines everywhere, and that saves me quite a bit of time. One final little tip. Uh, let's get rid of these. Go to the map. You can pick up stuff from logistic stations all across the planet you are currently on. And uh, that is very, very useful. And then you can just put them directly into your inventory. So yeah. Should you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section of the video. Or you can also come join us in the Discord server where we have a dedicated channel for Dyson Sphere program. You'll find the link to the Discord server in the description of this video. And uh, finally, thank you so much to JD Place. JD Place for uh, some valuable information that was necessary for this uh, tutorial video and uh, do go check out his channel. He has several tutorials on uh, Dyson Sphere program, uh, several which I have found very useful. With that, thank you so much for joining me and I will see you all next time.